Hey there, it's Mr. C from Dividend. In this video, we're going to cover the blog layouts, how to install them. First, let's have a look and see what they look like on the demo site. These are part of the Divi Unicorn bundle made by Dividend. You can see we've got a featured image, we've got some categories, title, date, and of course the author profile picture uh, there's some code we need to add for these to get it all to work the way that it's displayed in this sample or the way you would have purchased it let's have a look there we go there's the last bit right so the most important thing here is that in order for it to display like this you need some blog posts so whatever site you install it on if you don't have any blog posts it won't display like this it won't function at all in fact so you need to make some dummy blog posts or have some blog posts which you can use luckily we've made that easy for you these dummy blog posts that we have here we've got an xml file that we exported for you and that we're going to just import into our site uh, first that would be the first step so let's go to um, tools and then import export uh, then we can run the wordpress import here if it's not installed you just click the install button and wait for it to install once it's installed you can click run the importer then you choose the file you navigate to that there it is, the XML file, sorry. Click on that one and then import and then upload. And then we're just gonna assign it to Mr. C in this case. Now I can click the download and import file attachments. The problem will be is that within WordPress, if you want to import uh, files and images in particular between two different websites in this case your dummy website and the website which you use to export the XML file you have to have the same username on both sites logged in at the same time otherwise those image files will not transfer so that's guaranteed not to happen on your site when you import the XML file so in this case we just need to apply the featured images so let's just continue with the rest let's click submit there we go all done now we can go to posts let's have a quick look and see there are our posts but they won't have featured images attached so this is the next thing we want to do is we want to add those featured images because that's what we need in order for the um, dummy display that we're doing to work so let's click on add new and again we've given you those images they are in the zip file blog divi layout kit demo post so you can just click on all four of those click open let's upload them and then what you can do is from there you can go to posts you can click on each of these posts i'm just going to click on one to show you quickly how to do it and then you want to click set featured image you want to click on this one would be the first one um, important that you want to keep the same ratio of uh, the images when you upload them this one is 1200 by 849 uh, better that they're slightly bigger uh, but maintain the same ratio that way you know they're going to work and no matter what screen size you use so we've got that one let's click set featured image and then i'm going to update this post and then i'm just going to pause the video and do the rest and then i'll come back so that's the last featured image attached now we want to go and do the rest of the stuff including import the divi library items so let's go to divi divi library then we want to go to import export click import choose file navigate to the master json file which we've got here um, in the folder structure we've got the master which includes all of them and the css we've also split it up into one uh, to six each individually in case you want to do them we also have a jpeg file which shows you what they look like 
so you don't have to go to the um, demo site to see which ones they are and what they look like so that's made it easy for you uh, in addition we've got the functions.php file we'll come back to that in a moment and then we've got the css file so that you can update the styles and do your thing for now let's just import the master blog wjson and let's click import wait for it to load once this is imported we can go to a page and import one of these layout kits to then display what it would look like once we install it so i've already created a page i'm just going to go to pages and this would be a blog sample i'm just going to click on that one and there we go now that we've got the posts we can now import one of the sections and then that should display the way that we need it to However, before we do that final step, I remembered that we need to do two more things. We need to add the CSS and we also need to add the code to the functions.php file. So let's go to Divi and then we're going to theme options and then you scroll to the bottom where you add the CSS code. We navigate to our zip file again and we want to grab the master CSS, open that in your favorite editor uh copy all of that and we just go and paste it in here and then click save changes you can see it's all there then we also want to add the functions.php code uh, it depends on uh, what who your hosting company is you may not see this menu appearance editor which allows you to edit files you may also have um, managed hosting sometimes they block these functions for security features on your site if you don't see this option the only way to do it is via ftp so log in find the functions.php file for your child team make the update there the way that we're going to do it here so i'm going to click on edit then child theme theme functions let me click on that and then we want to paste the code right at the bottom again we want to go to our zip file and then the functions.php open that in an editor copy all of this and then go back and add it to the bottom of the functions.php file just before the closing tag let me paste that and then one other important thing is never have a space behind the closing tag otherwise your site won't load uh, and that's not good right so let's click update file and that means we can go back to our page now that we've added all the things we need let's click on this page and then we can go and add a module from the library so let's do that add from library and let's go with number three of six that works for me and then we can click update and from here we can now go and take a look at that page and it should display the way we expect it to there we go and let's see what responsive looks like fantastic it's all there now i do want to show you something else we had also some author pictures which you can see in the example here obviously each of the author would need to have a profile picture in order for it to show if there are no profile pictures or if the settings are different on the website those might show what you call a mystery person and let's do one of those quickly just so that i can show you how that works right so um we're just gonna clear this out quickly then we're gonna load another section that was the second section here, number two of six. And then what we can do is click update. Then let's go have a quick look at the page. And there you go. So that's a mystery person. That's because Mr. C doesn't have a profile picture at this point in time. So what you want to do is there's, there's different things you can display here. So you can display the avatar uh, or mystery person. To adjust these settings, you want to go to settings. Um, I believe this is reading. 
Um, no, it isn't. It's discussion. And then you want to scroll down to the bottom. Yeah, you can see the default avatar is mystery person or gravatar logo, etc. And that will be the author picture that will display there. Uh, alternatively, what you can do for a client is just add their logo um, for that particular user who wrote that post. And then you'll see a different image OBA. Now you may want to change these colors uh, that you can do either in the CSS by find and replace. Uh, let me just go to one of those as an example. I think we still have the CSS open here. In the top of the document, you can see uh, we've got the red color. It's the same throughout the entire unicorn bundle. You can just copy that code and then search it, find and replace. Uh, then save, go back to the front, have a look and see what this looks like. If there's still a component, uh, check in responsive as well. If there's still a component that hasn't changed color, then you want to go into the module settings and search that color and replace it. I think that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.